What is going on guys, it is WrestleMania here, back with another video. Join us now as we look at Backlash France and provide our exclusive analysis as we look at the good, the bad and the downright ugly. There's also been some major news as Gable Stevenson has been fired from WWE, a new Bloodline member, and in breaking news, WrestleMania 41 will be in Las Vegas. Be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell for daily wrestling videos and follow us on Facebook for exclusive lists. Also check out our new videos on WrestleMania XL. Now let's start off with the recap, as this is now a street fight as Randy Orton and Kevin Owens take on the bloodline of Solo Sokoa and Tamatonga. Both sides begin brawling before the bell, leading to SmackDown general manager Nick Aldis turning this one into a street fight. Orton and Owens take the fight to Sokoa and Tongo, with KO putting the finishing touches on Tamatonga. However, Tama's brother Tangaloa puts the referee out of the ring. A Samoan spine by Solo finishes Owens as Solo covers him for the three count as the bloodline win the match. Afterwards, Paul Heyman pleads with Solo and company not to inflict any further damage on Kevin Owens. Eventually, KO got to his feet and Orton helped him to the back. Next up is a triple threat match for the WWE Women's Championship as champion Bayley takes on Naomi and Tiffany Stratton. It's a solid triple threat that culminates in Tiffany going for a double prettiest moonsault ever, only to get the 3D from Naomi and Bayley. Bailey and Naomi face off one on one and both women take it to the mat and scramble for their pin. Bailey surprises Naomi by countering a pinfall, covering Naomi for the win as Bailey retains the WWE Women's Championship. Naomi and Bailey hug after the match. And then Jey Uso is seen backstage when he runs into Solo Sokoa, Tamatonga, and Tangaloa, who all give him the hairy eyeball. Paul Heyman shakes his head as he walks by Jay. Next up is the World Heavyweight Championship match as champion Damian Priest takes on main event Jey Uso. It's a very even match until the Judgment Day's JD McDonough shows up for an uninvited outside assistance. Although Priest doesn't want any help from the Judgment Day, they save him from losing the title and their interference is enough of a distraction for Priest to bounce back and hit an avalanche south of heaven for the 1-2-3 as Damian Priest retains the World Heavyweight Championship. McDonough and Finn Balor then stomp away at Jey Uso, but then Priest manages to stop them, shoving Bailey and nearly coming to blows. Next up is the WWE Women's Tag Team Championship match as the Kabuki Warriors of Asuka and Kairi Sane take on Bianca Belair and Jade Cargill. The Kabuki Warriors draw upon their vast experience as a team to counter Belair's skills and Jade's unpolished talent. Like any wise team, Asuka and Kairi Sane isolate an opponent, but a hot tag changes everything, leading to a jaded, aka Widow's Pete by Cargill on Sane and a KOD on Asuka as Bianca covers the Empress of Tomorrow for the victory. We now have new WWE Women's Tag Team Champions of Bianca Belair and Jade Cargill. And finally, it's time for the main event, as it's the undisputed championship match as the American Nightmare Cody Rhodes takes on the phenomenal AJ Styles. As a beautiful display of wrestling and counter wrestling, where neither man can break through to a victory. Eventually, Cody gets a high risk with a Cody cutter off the top rope and crossroads that puts Styles away, as Cody Rhodes retains the WWE Undisputed Championship as Backlash comes to a close. Now, was a quick recap of the show. What about the good, the bad, and the downright ugly? As always, we start off with the good as number one, a sensational start. A backlash started off strong, with the first match looking like it may not even start. Of course, the WWE didn't want to riot, so it only made sense for SmackDown general manager Nick Aldis to turn this into a street fight and give the fans an opening match that took an already frenzied crowd to new heights and set the stage for the rest of the show. Number 2. A Magnificent Main Event or Was tonight's main event the best at built-up program for a world title match? Well, not hardly, as the WWE took its time not only determining Cody's opponent, but also giving the AJ vs. Cody contest any type of storyline. Fortunately, both men went into overdrive with a, dare we say, phenomenal performance. This was a technical triumph as both superstars dove deep to find the right move to end the match and gave fans a rare glimpse into just how deep both men's moveset is. The title fight saw no quarter given as both superstars stopped at nothing to get the Duke, whether it was AJ hitting a brain buster on Cody on the mat apron or Rhodes powerbombing Styles through an announce desk. It's obvious that Cody has the good to put on a fantastic title defense anytime he steps in the ring and hopefully the WWE will spend some time building up future opponents so his title reign doesn't turn into an unpleasant afterthought. Number 3. Two Rookies on the Rise are Jay Cargill and Tiffany Stratton rookies? While both the ladies have had few years under their belt, they're still rookies on the main roster, albeit rookies that WWE seems to have a great expectation for. 
Tonight's PLE was another solid outing for both ladies as they looked good in the ring. Granted, the WWE put them alongside some of its best workers and protected them by featuring them in a tag team and triple threat match. Nonetheless, they showed plenty of promise and once again seemed to be working hard to make the most of their push. While there's always room for improvement, neither superstar is stinking up the ring. Number 4. An Electric Crowd Tonight's fans are the new standard for live events as their cheers shot through the LDLC arena like lightning. The fans didn't let up either, making every match seem extra special as they cheered for their favorites and jeered the wrestlers they couldn't stand. It was so crazy at one point that the cameraman couldn't even focus on AJ Styles as he was bouncing around the ring. As difficult to think of an arena show as rowdy as this and tonight's crowd blew away some of the fans' responses in the stadium shows. While there's an argument to be made that fans cross the line between cheering the show and making themselves the focus of the show, most fans watching at home would rather have a lively crowd than a bunch of fans sitting on their hands or bouncing beach balls around. Number 5. Paul Heyman, Actor of the Year Is Paul Heyman about to add an Academy Award for Best Actor to his trophy case? While Heyman can't win an Academy Award for a PLE, he seems like a shoe in if he ever joins a rock in Hollywood. Heyman has been superb as the embattled and bewildered tribal council who has no idea what is happening to the bloodline. His mannerisms are spot on and like any good actor, he doesn't have to utter a line to make his point. Although Heyman's role in the new bloodline seems more subdued, he's already helping it get over as much as he did when he began managing Roman Reigns in 2020. Number 6. Kabuki Warriors are unstoppable how can the Kabuki Warriors be unstoppable when, well, when they just dropped the women's, women's Tag Team Championship? While Asuka and Kairi Singh failed to keep the titles, their performance tonight was a reminder that they are by far the best female tag team in the WWE ever in the modern age. Yes, the current competition is hit and miss, but Asuka and Sane are on a pedestal that every team, including the new Tag Team Champion, should strive for. Until they do, the Kabuki Warriors are the WWE's uncrowned Tag Team Champions. While Bella is firmly established as a top single star, her pairing with Jade Cargill, which has plenty of promise, is still new and yet Asuka and Kairi Sane made them look like a million bucks. That's the kind of skill you want in your tank division, male or female, and the WWE needs to protect this team moving forward. Number 7. A Well-Deserved Break Congratulations to referee Jessica Khan on refereeing her first main event world championship match. Referees don't often garner attention, but nonetheless we feel that her achievement tonight deserves recognition as she's slowly becoming one of WWE's top officials, and superstars show their love. The WWE superstars went out of their way to return the love to the fans with babyfaces doing more than basking in the fans' cheers, but literally embracing the fans. Naturally, the fans ate up every moment of this, which only makes them eager to attend future shows. But that was good, what about the bad? Is number one, time for a tune-up? And Triple H should be settled into things creatively now that Vince McMahon is out of his hair, which means it's time to tune up the WWE's PLEs by adding a match or two to the show that fall outside the Big Four category. We've all heard the game talk about how he likes to have storylines breathe and grow, but there's still a substantial gap in the undercard, a gap that can be filled to a certain extent by adding one or two undercard matches to the WWE's PLEs. We're not asking for the return of meaningless matches, but the WWE has enough programs going both on Raw and SmackDown to play out. This can help build new and exciting stars while also making the PLEs even more exciting. It was nothing downright ugly as, as the WWE delivered a solid show for fans. Backlash would have been a success wherever it was held because the WWE booked four title matches and a solid slugfest featuring a new improved Bloodline versus Kevin Owens and Randy Orton, two men who still have many reasons for wanting revenge on the group and even more after tonight. What do you guys think of Backlash? Let us know in the comments down below. Now let's move on to the news. As first up, the WWE fires Gable Stevenson. The WWE has released Olympic gold medalist Gable Stevenson, a move which, while not surprising, couldn't come at a worse time for him. Stevenson, a two-time NCAA Division I wrestling champion and Olympic gold medalist in wrestling, not surprisingly, the WWE was eager to sign someone with his credentials, likely hoping to recapture the hype and excitement delivered when it signed Kurt Angle. Unfortunately, he's reportedly struggling to transition from amateur to pro. He certainly isn't the first athlete to find pro wrestling challenging. Apparently, the WWE felt it had given him enough time and it was time to release him. Well, one question concerns the timing of Stevenson's release. Dave Miltz commented on the timing in an article about Gable's release saying, The timing of the cut is especially cruel because it had been a few weeks earlier he could have competed in the Olympic trials, which, based on his 2023 performance, he'd have been a heavy favourite. Now let's be fair, his in-ring work was atrocious and the guy only had like 17 matches. Are you guys upset that the WWE released Stevenson? Let us know in the comments down below. And next up, breaking news as WrestleMania 41 will be in Las Vegas. 
And just after people tuned out from Backlash's premium live event, Triple H went into the post-show press conference and announced that WrestleMania 41 will indeed be held in Las Vegas at the Allegiant Stadium. The show will take place on April 19th and 20. This is a huge W, as many people were really pushing for WrestleMania 41 to be in Sin City, and now it's actually happening. Indeed, this would be the greatest place for The Rock vs. Roman Reigns. But also in other WrestleMania news, Triple H also confirmed that he's trying to get in talks with London Mayor Sadiq Khan and talk about holding a WrestleMania there. Could WrestleMania 42 or 43 be in London, England? Well, there you have it, folks. Our recap and review of Backlash France, as well as the wildest news stories and rumors you need to know. Be sure to leave your comments down below, and I'll see you next time with some more wrestling content.